some examples of how probability laws work in a, a very concrete case where we can check that they really are correct uh, because we have the sample space written out and we're very familiar with it. This is a roll of uh, two dice. Uh, the first roll, one through six, second roll, one through six, and so we've got 36 equal probability outcomes. So first, in, in this video, we're going to focus on the union of two events, which corresponds to logical or, and the complement, which corresponds to logical operation not. So first, uh, let's say event A is the first roll is at most... Two and that include that's inclusive. I don't didn't mean don't mean less than. I mean at most two. So in other words, uh, less than or equal to two. That's a parenthesis. Okay. And event B is the first roll is at least five. Okay. So now with my dry erase or my wet erase markers and my don't know if you can notice I've got some transparency here. Um, I'm going to color in A. That's the first roll is um, at most two. That's all this stuff. And then maybe orange. No, red. Red might be good. Oh, unless I drop the red. Okay. Um, so that's A. And then here's B. Yeah, red's not going to work too well. And that's not a very good marker. They're not all so great, apparently. So let's go with, where'd that one go? Uh, blue is better. Okay. All right. So let's look at the probability of A or B happening. And that's going to be, the claim is that the probability, let me stick it in over here, the probability of A or B, and we usually use set theoretic terminology, the union of those guys, and you can just read that as an or, but it's an inclusive or, um, not an exclusive or, A or B or both, and that'll be an issue very soon. Um, is this just probability of A plus probability of B? Well, in this case, it is, because we've got 12 out of 36, and this is 12 out of 36. And that would be 24 out of 36. And indeed, if I just look at all of the boxes that satisfy either condition, the union of two sets is just everything in here or in here, then that will be 24 boxes out of 36. So here, this is correct. However, if we change event B, so I don't want to give the impression that's always that simple, though. Let's change event B to be... Um, the sum of the two is at most seven. Okay, so that's going to change this guy. The sum is at most seven. Let me get it dry. It might be here. Oh. That's weird. Oh, I see. I'm accidentally wiping off the bottom there. Okay, so the sum is at most 7. That's going to be it's kind of tricky to keep track of all these markers of different kinds. That's everything above here. Okay, so that's all this guy. And now there's an overlap between the two. Okay, so now the probability okay, if we try to just say, oh, I think it's just going to add um, plus P of B. We'll see, we're going to need to correct that. Okay, so don't take this on, but don't stop the video now and think that's the answer. Probability of A is still 12 out of 36. Probability of B, well, if we count it up, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21. You can stop the video and count if you want. Okay, that would be 33 over 36. Okay, that's not even, that's not right, because that would be all but three down here, okay. Um, in fact, um, what is it really? It's the 21, and in fact, there's, that incorporates almost all of the green. The only green here that you didn't count in this 21 was one more, so this is a vast overcounting, okay. So that's not correct. 
what happened was that we double counted each of the things in the intersection. So in the intersection, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, all of these guys are in the intersection. That's where they're both true. And since we double counted it, we just correct by taking it out. And so that's in the intersection. That's everything that's in both of the sets. It corresponds to and, logically. Okay. And there's some, some its own issues that go on with that. But right here, it's just a pretty simple. It's the and. So I need to subtract everything that's in both. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Which really almost kills the contribution from A because there's so much overlap in A. These, this, again, the 2, two 6 is the only thing that's not in the overlap. And so we really get just get 22 over 36. And there really are 22 things. There's the 21 things in blue plus the one green. That's the green didn't show up terribly well there. That's in green because that, that first is a 2. Okay. So that would have been quite a, a bad mistake. Um, not just a qualitative mistake, but really a big quantitative mistake as well. Okay. So this is the rule. You've got to count... Uh, how many the probability of one thing happening, probably another thing happening, and correct for overcounting by subtracting the probability of them both happening. If there is some, if it's not, this is going to be zero. So this formula is always true. It's just that this probably would be zero if a intersect b is the empty set. Okay, so one more example in this video, and then I'll do one about and focusing on and and the uh, concept of independence. Um, third example is let's look at. Um, the probability that the sum on the two dice is at least 5. Okay, so let's look at what that is. Um, use my wet erase marker here. I erase everything. Okay, let's see if I can get that relatively clean without mussing up what's underneath it. That's pretty good. Okay. So the sum is at least five. That's just one event. We're not talking about doing two events. The sum is at least five. So here's one that's five, five, five. Looks like it's everything under this jaggy here. So it's all of this stuff. Okay. Well, in this one, I could just really count count them out, but I want something that's a better principle because as soon as you get past like just two dice, two six-sided dice, it's going to be obnoxious to try to count it or, or darn near impossible. And the principle is that if you've got a condition and it's easier to look at the negation of that condition, what happens if it's not true, then you're going to get a one minus the probability of everything else, and that's the complement Okay, and different people have different notations for this, but one notation is if this event is back, is our new event A, for example, uh, sometimes it's called A prime, sometimes it's called A with a little C on top, various notations, okay? It means everything but that. Okay, so what that means is we're just focusing on this event up here, everything up here. The probability of something happening is 1 minus, or 100%, let's say, minus the probability of, um, of it not happening. So this is it happening, this is not happening. Okay, now this, in this case, that's a lot easier to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1 minus 6 over 36. Um, or another way to say it is I'm just say, taking, one reason why this principle is true, is I'm taking all 36, subtracting out the 6 to get the 30 that I want, any way you slice it, it's 5 out of 6. Okay. The nice thing about the phrasing it this way is that I might have got, I might be able to know the probability of something not happening, not through counting. And this principle is always true. And similarly, this principle is always true, no matter how you calculate the probabilities. And we'll do examples where these have nothing obviously to do with counting, and yet we can use these probability principles. All right, that's a good one. That's good for this one.